legacy weapons and assassinations potentially returning co-op and how it will play out in halo infinite limited time modes coming in halo and the dmr return and more well i answer that and more of your questions within this video so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing another kind of video where we're answering questions from the community. I recently went to my community page on my channel here and I asked you guys a question of do you have anything you want to know more about Halo Infinite? And you guys replied with a ton of questions. So obviously I'm not gonna be able to get all the questions you guys asked within this video, but I will be pulling some from here and be pulling more questions in future videos as well. So if you guys want to catch up to date whenever I do post on the community page here for a Q&A, you want to participate in, well make sure you subscribe to the channel. So let's get right into the content here. El Elyon, friend of the channel here, do you think they will add legacy content like classic shotgun, magnum, playable leads, etc. later in Halo Infinite's lifespan? I absolutely do believe that we will see some legacy content from Halo's past in put into Halo Infinite at some point within the 10 year span of Halo Infinite. Yes, I think so. Do I think maybe in the first year? Maybe not. Second year, most likely, is when we kind of would start seeing the stuff coming around. Stuff like the classic shotgun, magnum, and playable elites. Well, playable elites is a little bit more complicated than just like adding in a new weapon. The magnum and classic shotgun, I could totally see coming in to Halo Infinite. I did make a whole video talking about why playable elites can be way more complicated than just having a character to play as. There's so many more elements to Halo Infinite that are going to be new to Halo Infinite that we haven't really had a chance to play around with, so we don't know the full impact of playable elites has on the multiple systems within Halo Infinite's feature structure I guess you want to call it that but when it comes to adding content we do know that they will be adding like new armor sets new weapons new maps throughout the lifespan of Halo Infinite so I would totally see like the Magnum and Classic Shotgun coming back as those are going to be highly requested items I mean there's already enough of a pushback from when they first said that the Classic Shotgun and Magnum won't be in the game at launch so I'm pretty sure it will come in as an post-launch content and to what time we don't know. I just have a feeling it's going to be like the Halo 5 Spanker rocket launcher all over again because when we got that new rocket launcher in Halo 5 everyone's like what the heck is this weird green tube thing like this just doesn't look like the rocket launcher that we had from Classic Halo. We eventually did get it put into the game. I feel like something similar though it is also very important to make sure that these new weapons do fit into the sandbox properly so it's not just like a reskin it actually adds a new element to the gameplay right some classic magnum is one thing that it's a high damage weapon with high precision which does kind of go in line with like the dmr and br kind of weapons that we've had previously which we'll talk about the dmr later in this video so you don't want to make it redundant to the battle rifle because the battle rifle replaced the magnum to try to even out the sandbox a little bit throughout halo's franchise now the classic magnum did come back in halo 3 but it was just kind of a shell of its former self. The classic shotgun has always been true because it's always been the shotgun that we've had. We never really had like multiple types of shotguns besides the Mauler, but that was kind of a different thing and we only saw it in two games of Reach and Halo 3. And the Maulers were intended to be played around with along with the dual wielding feature, which we do not have in Halo Infinite. So there's that. And we do know that there's going to be like a high power shotgun as well as the Bulldog shotgun that we have seen is much more of a high fire rate, low damage kind of shotgun that we've had. So how is a classic shotgun going to fit in with between these two different dynamics of the close range and more probably long range shotguns? And how is it going to be in the middle of that to really make it or to really serve a purpose within the sandbox besides just looking like the classic shotgun? Bill Vadam asks, do you think assassinations will be returning in Halo Infinite? Now this was the most liked question on the community post so I, you know I had to answer that one and I 100% absolutely assume the assassinations will be coming back in Halo Infinite. We've had assassinations in Halo since Halo Reach. Now the original implementation of those assassinations was rather rudimentary, it was just really just kind of depending on the character you're assassinating and the angle you did it at. Uh, I think maybe the weapon as well but uh, Essentially, it was just kind of like you hold down the button in the back, you get a cool assassination. 
Then later on they tried to customize that, which is actually a really cool option. Really adds some more personality to the gameplay as well, especially they kind of double down on that with Halo 5. Which there are a ton of really awesome assassinations within Halo 5, and I think it's one of the great parts about the customization within that game. So I would so I would highly suspect it to come back, especially since it will actually probably play into the like season pass that we know it's coming with Halo Infinite probably play into the microtransactions in some way or another. We've seen assassinations come in and to other shooters as well, like Destiny 2 added in executions later on within the game. And they're a really fun feature to add into if you're just going in for a flashy melee kill, you can do that. I know that you can unlock those and I think I believe you can also get them in some uh, microtransactions as well. So there's a bit of earning them and also just paying for them if you want them essentially. And kind of the same way also with Call of Duty, they brought those in with Modern Warfare 2019. And some of those assassinations, even though with Modern Warfare were pretty janky, later on they did improve them quite a bit to where they're pretty cool features. Now, I haven't really bothered with like understanding if the microtransactions are involved with those assassinations. Knowing Activision, most likely. So it's going to be really important to see how Microsoft and 343 balance this out where you'll be able to earn probably assassinations within the game. And I'm pretty sure the really cool assassinations are probably going to be tied in with the season pass or into some microtransaction as well. Because the, come on, the multiplayer is free to play. They're probably going to monetize the customization. That's the most generally accepted way to monetize a game like this. But yeah, I would love to see assassinations come back and I'd be highly, highly surprised if they do not. Now, I saw this next question from three different people so I kind of felt like I had a trend that I probably should answer this topic of about co-op within the campaign. Questions from Blarp, Bonzo, and GTR Blackhawk all had questions about co-op campaign and customizations and how your Spartan will be represented in that. Currently, from what we know about Halo Infinite's campaign co-op gameplay experience that it's going to be two player split screen, but four player online co-op. Now this next section, I could have sworn I read somewhere. I just never been able to find it. So maybe I'm wrong on this, but I could have sworn I remember hearing that you play as Master Chief if you're like player one and all your other co-op friends play as our custom multiplayer Spartans. If I remember correctly, this could be completely wrong, so don't take me at my word on this. Though personally, that's how I would love to see co-op be played, where the main player, the person probably hosting the lobby, is playing as Master Chief, and all your cutscenes are just with Master Chief, and all your friends are playing as like their custom multiplayer Spartan, like we had, like say, like in Halo Reach, where you bring in your custom Spartan into the game. I absolutely love that feature. That's the one thing I actually kind of don't like about playing as Master Chief. Probably the only thing I don't like about playing as Master Chief is that you're not able to play as your custom Spartan within the campaigns. So if there's a way to do that for the campaign one i think it actually really help push microtransactions for people who mainly play pve elements so that's one thing to look into and two it just adds more customization for people to make the game their own experience which is what a big emphasis of halo infinite is is player choice then people choose what they want to do with the game essentially and how they want to play it. It would be cool to be able to bring in those weapon and armor coatings into the campaign as well. Again, just to flex a little more customization right there. I have a feeling that's how it might play out for, like I said, co-op gameplay, but for a single player experience, you're playing as Master Chief. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to customize them. Maybe you will be. Again, we'll just have to wait on that kind of information. We might know more in June for the big gameplay reveal for E3 this year. And especially since the campaign is going to have a lot more replayability because of how dynamic the enemy spawns are going to be. Talking about replayability for the PvE modes, Holotide, fellow YouTuber here, make sure you guys tap him subscribe, give him up to that 8k mark right there. Do you think it, as in Halo Infinite, will try to capture other game player bases? Coming from Destiny, there's a lot of talk and speculation on if campaign slash PvE will have the same replayability. So like I just mentioned before that the enemy spawns are going to be dynamic depending on what you're playing. So if you're playing in a Warhog, you're playing against guys who are like anti-Warhog guys. If you're playing in an aerial vehicle, you're coming across more people who are anti-vehicle you know, vehicle oriented kind of stuff. If you're on foot, yeah, let me guess. You're playing as guys who are more infantry focused and stuff like that, which is a really cool experience that makes sure that almost everyone's playthrough of Halo Infinite will not be the same. There's no like tank section or banshee section or aerial section. It's 
tell sections are just dynamic to player choice and player agency, which is absolutely revolutionary to the campaign style of gameplay that we've experienced with Halo. Well, that's gonna be fun and all, yes, but why go back and replay this? That's a big thing to get people to want to do that. Now, we do know that there are gonna be challenges within Halo Infinite. You will have challenge swaps and stuff like that as well, as we confirmed the last year within some of the Butterfinger promotions right there. So that'd be one reason why to jump in for some replayability for the campaign. Probably the same way we have for like MCC for PVE modes. Though I would like to see something more than that. Destiny does a really great job of, of having strikes, which are like these segmented moments within the campaign. There are like these boss battles you, you go to throughout, you play throughout the entire map. And at the end, you go to a boss battle, you get some loot and stuff like that. Now, if there's a way that 343 could try to replicate like a campaign playlist where you go through and play that, maybe earn some tokens or some in-game currency to where you can put that towards microtransactions or something like that. Now, that would be super cool. And also with strikes that they are automatically matching you with two other players as well. So it's a cooperative ex online experience as well, which does add to that replayability and more fun dynamic to it. So if 343 can find some way to have like these segmented uh, direct and focused missions in a way in the campaign side of things would be a really great way for you PVE guys to get way more playability out of the campaign. Because what we've had traditionally is just mainly just like a one and done kind of experience. Like, yeah, it's fun to go back and replay it, but like it's you're really kind of getting the same experience every time. And Halo Infinite's trying to get around that by being so dynamic with your player choice. So it's super exciting what they're doing. JL Pixel asks, do you think multiplayer will have special events that are like limited time modes to bring new players into multiplayer? So we have something similar to what's going on right now with Halo 5 and MCC, right? They have, you have these rotational playlists that come in and out to kind of just go like, hey, it's something new to go and jump in and play around with. Halo 5 has really been like recycling the same playlist for the last like year or so. Uh, MCC as well. Like, oh, cool. This week it's uh, Shoddy Snipes. Oh, this week's Griff Ball again. Or this week is Action Zack. Like, yeah, it's fun to have those rotational modes, but it's nothing too crazy. I remember when uh, Reach launched and then we had that one time playlist. I think it was called like Winter Contingency Playlist, I think what it was called. Where basically you played Freeze Tag with these focus rifles and it had like a bit of a King of the Hill element to it. So it was a really fun gameplay dynamic that's so unique that you can't really get anywhere else. I really felt like a custom game within matchmaking, which is really tough to get to be fun. Now, when you hear LTMs, you're probably thinking like, Fortnite because that's kind of what they really got known for and you'd be right because Fortnite's done some really cool LTM stuff. Uh, if you guys don't know, they've done like a 50 versus 50 mode, which is pretty interesting. They've also done another mode, which I think is 50 versus 50 as well, but there's a wall that cuts the map in half, right? You have five minutes to build the best fortress you could possibly build, and then that wall disappears and everyone just goes at it. So that's actually a really cool dynamic thing as well. Call of Duty Warzone, as well as Apex Legends, have also had like zombie modes as well, which are pretty interesting. So some kind of way to kind of freshen up the gameplay. But the main thing is what I've noticed about these is they all provide some kind of new content or some kind of reason why to play this. So there's some unique aspect to it that you really can't get anywhere else within the game. Because I do expect the custom game browser to be coming in with Halo Infinite as well, maybe not at launch, but eventually maybe within the first year or so. And with how much creativity that's sounding like from the rumors that Forge is gonna be able to have, uh, there's a lot of things that can be done there. So what can developers do though to make something really different and special compared to what people can do in Forge? Maybe utilize Forge more to where they can probably take some fan-made creations that are really popular, bring that into matchmaking so maybe more people get a chance to play around with it. Certainly interesting. But yeah, I, I highly suspect uh, limited time modes coming back. Uh, if they can find a way to maybe like get double XP or more uh, tokens for challenge swaps or some more currency stuff. You know, some more people to kind of funnel into that content a little bit more rather than just being like an option. You know what I mean? The Spare Drum Room asks, do you think we will see the DMR back in Halo? I really like that weapon. It was great for quickly killing grunts. They really need to do something different with the DMR, I feel, to really make it fit like that, not quite sniper range, but longer than a battle rifle, essentially. The one game I felt really hit this mark was actually when I was playing SPV3, and they had the Project Lemoria campaign, and they added in the DMR within that campaign, but they really changed that, where they lowered the magazine size to like 
six or seven or eight shots or something like that but it's a high damage high recoil kind of weapon where it's really suited for long range engagements where it's multiple shots so it's a little bit weaker than a sniper rifle but it can certainly do a lot better than like a magnum or a battle rifle at certain ranges or maybe with the dmr that the bullet speed is a lot faster than the battle rifle i could totally see that being like something a dmr would be able to do so then these larger scale modes you can have a less lead time as well because if they're both hit scan like they kind of were in halo 5 uh, that's again just proves more redundancy putting in a little bit less bullet lead time for the dmr it would be super beneficial to make that weapon more beneficial within the sandbox. So if you guys have been out of the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, or missing any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.